Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our channel once again. There is something that I've consistently reminded you about on this platform. That in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. And that everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Nothing in politics just happens for the sake of it. In October last year, William Samuel Arab Ruto appointed Musali Mdavadi as the cabinet secretary for foreign affairs. Why do you think William Ruto appointed Musali Mdavadi as the cabinet secretary for foreign affairs? Is it making sense to you today? I'm coming back to that, but let me take you to something which Hussein Mohammed updated yesterday on his official Twitter handle. Hussein Mohammed is the spokesperson status. This is what Hussein Mohammed posted. Press release for immediate release. President Ruto departs for Ghana. Guinea-Bissau visits. President William Ruto will depart on Tuesday afternoon for a state visit to Ghana, followed by an official visit to Guinea-Bissau. During his visit, he will hold talks with President Nana Akufo Ado of Ghana and Umaro Sisoko Embao of Guinea-Bissau, aiming to strengthen diplomatic, trade corporations, and historical ties between Kenya and the two West Africa nations. In Ghana, just listen, in Ghana, President Ruto will emphasize the importance of collaborative efforts to strengthen and consolidate democratic governance in Africa. He will also visit the African Continental Free Trade Area headquarters in Accra with a focus on boosting Kenyan tea and leather export to Ghana. These efforts will be supported by memorandum of understanding between private and public sector entities aimed at improving trade between Kenya and Ghana under the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. And the, the statement proceeds, the statement proceeds, I just want to read a part of it. The head of state will also address the Ghana-Kenya Business Forum to explore investment and trade opportunities across various sectors. I just want to end it there because it's a bit long. But there's something which I want us to talk about. William Ruto's visit to Ghana and Guinea-Bissau. Because that visit has exposed Rigadi Gashagwa. And I'm 100% sure that Rigadi Gashagwa is a worried man. The truth of the matter is that there is no way the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya can leave the country together. When the President is out, the Deputy President is supposed to be in the country. Having understood that, I want to explain to you guys why Rigadi Gashagwa is being isolated and why Rigadi Gashagwa should be worried. Now, let us go back to my first question. Why do you think William Ruto appointed Muslim Dabadi as the Minister for Foreign Affairs in October last year? Because that appointment came after Kenyans had faced, because that appointment came after Kenya had faced serious mandamanos and protests across the country and after Raila Odinga and William Ruto had actually met with Obasanjo. So why do you think Ruto decided to appoint Muslim Dabadi? Because certain things are not clear. Number one, William Ruto wanted to make Muslim Dabadi a member of the National Security Council. As a minister for foreign affairs, automatically Muslim Dabadi now sits in that committee. Muslim Dabadi was just a mere, a mere prime cabinet secretary which means he could not sit in those high-level meetings. Number two, William Ruto also wanted to assign Muslim Dabadi portfolio. Remember, the, the, the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary was just a mofas. It was, basically, Muslim Dabadi was a minister without portfolio. By handing him over the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ruto gave Muslim Dabadi portfolio. And the third thing, which is not very clear, is that the appointment of Muslim Dabadi was intended to help him campaign for Raila Amolo Odinga. And that's why in politics, nothing just happened for the sake of it. If you look at William Ruto's cabinet today, who do you think is best suited to lead Raila Odinga's campaign for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission? Who? Other than Muslim Dabadi. And of course, you also know that Muslim Dabadi 
is a dependable hand we are probably needed someone who is dependable to manage the docket of the foreign affairs so william ruto was in ghana today he arrived yesterday today and i think he's also going to go to guinea bissau so the truth of the matter is that that visit is significant so in this video i want to reveal to you guys why rejedi gashagwa should actually be worried because the visit is exposing him before we do that for those who are watching this channel for the first time please take a second or two click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you and to the subscribers i want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support this channel cannot be where it is ladies and gentlemen why do you think rejedi gashagwa should be worried about the whole thing because William Ruto is embarking on a journey and they are going to work very closely with the Muslim Dabadi. Number one, the support for Raila Mulolinga. As the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs and William Ruto as the head of the state or the president, and of course, you know, Raila Odinga is definitely going to win that seat. It simply means that William Ruto wants to take credit for that success. Apart from William Ruto, who else is going to take credit? Of course, the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs, who is Muslim Davadi, who will be moving around. I want you guys to just listen to William Ruto voting for Raila Murudinga while in Ghana. Finally, on 15th March this year, the African Union Executive Council unanimously decided that candidates for the position of the next chairperson of the Africa, Commission, Africa Union Commission would be nominated by the Eastern African Region States in accordance with the statutes of the AU Commission, the rules of procedure, and the African Union policy organs and decisions of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government. Your Excellency, my dear brother, I thank you most sincerely for accepting to support Kenya's candidature for the position of the chairperson of the African Union Commission 2025-2028 which has been initiated following comprehensive stakeholder engagement process across government. Kenya's candidature is informed by our leading role in enhancing and sustaining the Pan-African agenda in terms of independence and sovereignty, peace and security, development and prosperity, as well as sustainability and climate action. We hope to work with all as we try to achieve Africa's 2063 agenda. On our part, I have assured His Excellency that Kenya will support the Republic of Ghana for the candidature of Honorable Charlie Bochy, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, for the position of Secretary General of the Commonwealth for the period 2024-2029. Excellency, this presents an opportunity for Kenya and Ghana to collaborate. I take this opportunity to assure Your Excellency of my personal support and commitment of the Republic of Kenya to working with you and the government of the Republic of Ghana to further strengthen the bonds of friendship between our two countries. I wish Your Excellency, the great people of Ghana, my very best wishes and prosperity. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Shall we honor these two great leaders of our time? Indeed, two illustrious sons of Mother Africa. Of course, you all know that the president of Ghana, Nana, is a good friend of Raila Mulodinga and definitely was going to vote for Raila Mulodinga. But the truth is, William Ruto is keen on taking credit. So, which means there is the Raila Mulodinga supporters at stake for 2027 and also for 2032. Raila Odinga is locking Rigedi Gashago out of those people. Number two, there's always the international networks. You see, in the last election, I knew so well that Raila Odinga was going to win the presidency. Why? Because Raila Odinga had the international networks. William Ruto did not have that deep international networks. Of course, William Ruto had friends outside the country who would pump money into his campaigns. And most of them were people of questionable characters. But William Ruto succeeded because the American government and the British were not comfortable with Raila Morodinga. And of course you understand why. I know most of you might not understand, but there is the politics of the BRICS. Where South Africa is there, 
Raila Russia is there and you know Raila Odinga is always tied to Russia and the South African president is a close friend of Raila Odinga so they thought that they were going to persuade Raila Odinga to, to join the BRICS so they locked Raila Odinga but it's very difficult for anybody to win the presidency minus international networks so Musali Mudavadi is creating those networks where Srigadhi Gashagwa and Musali Mudavadi is creating those networks Rigadi Gashagwa is busy fighting alcoholism <laughs> in Mount Kenya. So he's being confined there. Number three, there is also the aspect of resource mobilization. You see, campaigns is normally very expensive. You need to have friends within and outside. As a minister of foreign affairs, Muslim Davadi has been meeting friends, he's been meeting foreign affairs minister, business leaders. So, by the end of his term, rest assured that Muslim Dabadi, if he can use his brain, would be able to mobilize resources in 2032 if he were to campaign. What about Rigadi Gashago? He's being locked out. Just like Uhuru did for Ruto. Those are the realities. And lastly, I'm also looking at 2032 politics. William Ruto is trying to confine Rigadi Gashago to Mount Kenya. He wants Rigadi Gashago to appear as um, you want Rigadi Gashagwa to appear as uh, a Kikuyu, typical Kikuyu leader, not a Kenyan leader, while at the same time opening opportunities for Muslim Dabadi. At the end of his term, Muslim Dabadi shall have managed to add to his CV, cabinet secretary for foreign affairs, uh, did this, did that, you know, let Rodriguez campaign. What about Rigadi Gashagwa? You see, one of the positions which are not very lucrative in this republic is the office of the deputy governor and that of the deputy president. They work under the mercy of the president. <laughs> so I don't know what you think. That's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.